Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, The Silver Fox. Sometimes you just have to put your head in your hands and wonder what the hell is going on in the minds of these morons. Air Mars Angus is about to fly off to China to wave the Scottish flag, to remind Chinese people about the great thing that Scotland is. Oh, look at us, he says, as he travels halfway around the world at public expense on a nice little jaunt. I'm sure they'll be supping that champagne at 30,000 feet and shoving as much caviar into that big fat gob as he can possibly do. He, of course, won't be sitting in cattle class. He'll be up the front end in business or first. After all, he is a minister of state, apparently. And what is he going to do when he gets to China? This oaf knows nothing. This oaf is going to go and do more damage in one visit than the Foreign Office has managed to do in 200 years. And we've fought two wars with them. And yet there he is going off to see them and kiss Chinese ass the very day after a Chinese petrol company closes down Grangemouth. The optics aren't good, are they? It really does look like he's part of the problem rather than part of the solution. And people must have a view on this that needs to be expressed at the next election, I think. Vote the oath out. Let's take a look, see what he's doing and see what mayhem he's about to cause in China. Here it goes. Right, do please hit the subscribe button. It absolutely helps the channel. We're political. We keep getting pushed down in the algorithm. Uh, and as I said in the previous one, um, YouTube is playing silly buggers and it's unsubscribing people against their will. So please ensure you are still subscribed. And if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. It absolutely helps us get the truth out there and spread the good word. And also hit the like button while you're doing it. That again, absolutely brilliant for the channel. So if you're a regular viewer who's yet to subscribe, please do so. And if you're a new viewer who's yet to subscribe, also please do so. It means a lot. Anyway, Angus Robertson, let's get to the headline. Angus Robertson blasted as a useful idiot for China as he jets off to Beijing for trade and tourism visit. Well, I don't know if it's about promoting tourism or if it's just him going on a tourism visit. That seems more likely. Uh, but the term useful idiot, it gets me. Um, I'll grant you idiot, but I would never ever in my entire life have described Angus Robertson as useful. There is nothing useful about that oaf. Anyway, as the world holds its breath over the showdown between the US and China over Taiwan, where incidentally, if you remember the other day, uh, President Sleepy Joe Biden described the uh, President Z uh, as um, a dictator rather than saying he wasn't. He got that way when he was spot on, but it was still a mistake. Um, but then this is what happens when you get idiots in control. Talking of idiots in control, Angus Robertson is going blundering into Beijing to celebrate St Andrew's Day. You'd have thought he'd have celebrated St Andrew's Day in a place that actually celebrated it rather than a country where it's banned. But hey, uh, it's a, and he wants to sign a deal on culture and tourism. He wants to what? Adopt Chinese culture of oversight, of Marxism, of complete and utter control and a single party state. Oh no, yeah, they do have a lot in common after all, don't they? Uh, anyway, Angus Robertson has been warned that he could be used by China as a useful idiot in a high stakes game of global politics. No, China will look at him and go, who, who the fuck is that? They won't know who he is. They don't care. He's not even a state. He's nothing to do with any kind of sovereign nation. He's, you know, he's just some minor official. They, he won't meet anyone important. He's kidding himself. All this is, is a little holiday for Angus because it's been a while since he's been on a plane and he does like, you know, sitting there feeling important, doesn't he? Uh, the External Affairs Secretary and a team of aides are jetting off to Beijing for the first SNP government visit since 2019. I wonder how much this is costing. It isn't going to be cheap, even though it is pointless. During those four years, the UK's relationship with China has disintegrated over a civil rights crackdown in Hong Kong spying and espionage in the UK and China's support for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Also remember that there was the fuck you or the ping loon or whatever it was called, the restaurant in uh, Glasgow that was a front for the Chinese secret police. And apparently the SNP knew this, done the video on that. Very sneaky. It almost as though 
the SNP are looking at how China runs a country and thinking, hmm, me too. Anyway, there are also fears that the US and China are heading inexorably towards an armed conflict over Taiwan. And against this, actually, there won't be. You see, China's screwed. China is actually screwed by its own success. Um, all the US has to do is say, eh, just not buying your stuff, and impose such a massive tariff on anything coming in from China that nothing will come in from China, and then China goes third world almost overnight. Literally, a um, hundred million people unemployed almost immediately. That's how big the problem is for China. They don't know how to deal with it. Uh, anyway, against this tense and politically delicate backdrop, Foreign policy expert Stuart Crawford, who was once the SNP's defence advisor, asked of defence advisor, the SNP's defence advisor, they haven't even got an army. They haven't got an air force. They haven't got anything. Oh, this, what? what is the Scottish Navy? Two, two men in a rowing boat? For heaven's sake. Anyway, they asked of Robinson's taxpayer funded five day visit, what the hell has it got to do with him? Yes, exactly. What the hell has it got to do with Angus Robertson? Anyway, the danger is that he could be seen by the Chinese as a kind of useful idiot. Uh, he added, visits like this give the Chinese government a certain amount of credibility, though Angus is really punching above his weight. And let's face it, that's some incredible weight. I mean, he's up there in the, uh, you know, in the Ian Blackford category. I mean, he's not a Greg's guy, but he is someone who does put it away. Let's be honest. Uh, China is a global behemoth that straddles the world in a way that Scotland will never do. And he's going there in a role of supplicant. Oh, he'll be down kowtowing on bended knees, kissing yellow arse every day, trying to make himself in with the in crowd and be important and maybe see someone above the rank of fourth level grade junior assistant vice principal of some tiny factory in Shanghai or something. He's not going to meet anyone of any importance. Uh, what Scotland can possibly offer is that of interest to, Scot uh, to China, apart from Fastlane, which is probably the only asset that Scotland has in geopolitical terms. And if the SNP ever got independence, they wouldn't even have Fastlane. Let's be honest, that would have to move probably Plymouth or Portsmouth or something. Anyway, Crawford also questioned how the visit will play out in terms of the tense showdown over Taiwan. Earlier this month, Biden and Xi, uh, Xi Jinping Z being the surname, of course, that's the family name in Chinese. Jinping would be his first name, as it were. They reverse everything. It's family then given. Uh, anyway, oh, sorry, so patronising of me. I'm sure most of you knew that, but I do apologise. Anyway, uh, they held talks in San Francisco, but failed to find any common ground over the fate of the disputed island in the South China Sea. The US side should stop arming Taiwan and support China's peaceful reunification, Z told Biden according to Beijing's accounts of the talks. Uh, China will realise reunification and this is unstoppable. It's also unacceptable. Taiwan is an independent democratic nation. To be taken over by an undemocratic dictatorship goes against everything the West stands for. And I think it will actually end up being, uh, if not a, a shooting war, at least a cold war and certainly a standoff war uh, with a lot of militarisation around the zone. Very sort of North and South Korea-ish. Uh, anyway, in response, Biden described his Chinese opposite number as a dictator, which is accurate, but unpolitical. Uh, Crawford, and very unhelpful too, it must be said. Uh, Crawford said, Beijing has always said Taiwan is part of the Republic, but the USA recognises mainland China and Taiwan as separate countries. They see Robertson in his separatist clothes as being more of a threat and a danger in terms of the way they see Taiwan, then his visit might not be as fruitful as he hopes, because of course, they want to go away from the mother country, as it were. They want to go away from the United Kingdom in much the same way as Taiwan did from China. And so he gets there. This is why he's not going to be anyone of importance. He's going to be, oh, Scottish wanker. You know? Or whatever, you know, I don't know what the Chinese would be. Ni hao ma. Ni hao ma, wanker. Something like that. Or no lobo. Depends if it's Cantonese or Mandarin. Don't ask. Uh, anyway, from the UK's perspective, the defence analyst added that the Scottish government visit would not be welcomed by the Foreign Office. Of course not. The Foreign Office spent years blundering around out there, finally working out exactly what's going on. And then in comes Bungle from Rainbow, pushing it around, going, oh, hello, you know, I'm here. 
And then going, looking for Jeffrey. Jeffrey's been left at home. Hey. Thought of that. Uh, thankfully, we won't want her there, would you? Um, anyway, so Bungle will be bungling around China, doing more harm in a week than, you know, than has ever happened. And for what? To fulfil his own need for self-importance and champagne at 30,000 feet while sitting in a suitably wide chair, you know, feeling like he is a, I don't know, a world leader? Certainly not that, is it? But he is an absolute idiot. Um, but he, what can you do? What can you do? And then there's some lines and some politics. Oh, I intend to do this. I intend to do this. And we want to go there and there and there and there. He wants a holiday. That's what he wants. And there he is. Look, see? That, yeah. Pointing the gun. Pointing the gun. That's what he's doing. He's going to cause so many problems. Please, God, somebody stop him. Somebody find a problem with his passport. Somebody find a problem with the plane. Somebody tell the fat-tongued idiot that he mustn't go to China. Unbelievable. They should ban him. They should just... They, <laughs> the British government should just cancel his passport. That'd be fun. Anyway, I'm going to round up and come up. So ultimately, why is he going to China? Well, they went there in 2019. And you know what it's like. You know, with one visit to China, four years later. Mm, feel like another one, don't you? Rubbish. He just wants to be important. And yet he's so not. He's so not important. And he won't, like I say, get anywhere near power because he represents a very th real threat because he's a separatist. And the last thing China want is anything to do with separatists. Like I say, he'll meet someone so far down the food chain, it'll basically be the janitor of some building. That's all he'll meet at great expense for him and his aides. I bet you this is a million pound wanked away so fat boy can go and quaff champagne at 30,000 feet and earn some more air miles on his personal account. What a tit. Oh well. I shall finish there. Thank you very much for watching. Do please hit the subscribe button. It is something, like I say, it's completely shady the way these numbers just keep falling down like that and then you get people hitting and they go back up again and then fall down again and then... And nothing's coming off on the videos, right? I'm not gaining it. It's not videos. It's just them deleting them. They're wankers. Anyway, till next time, stay safe, stay well. And let's see how much this visit costs, both in terms of money and in terms of political fallout, because I think it's going to be bad. Thank you for watching. Bye.